Hello, Stephen here, and welcome back to our Apache 95 WebSocket Dataflow. This is our part two, and uh, before we get started on it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't had an opportunity to do it yet. That way, you can be you can utilize functions like the notify, and uh, you can just be up to date on new videos that get posted. Also, uh, leave those comments. Definitely enjoy uh, reading them and trying to help out where I can here and there when I have time. And at the end of the video, feel free to like, or you don't need to, the video if you found it helpful to yourself. All right, so in this part two, we are going to wrap up our entire data flow here and finish handling for the text message that comes over a WebSocket for the listen. And then we'll go ahead and set up a put WebSocket as well to uh, close the connection on the other side. Now, before we do that, there's a couple house cleaning things we need to do here and a couple corrections from the last time. Uh, first is the query record down here. So I actually made a mistake here. It was my intent to, when we go in here and look, the last uh, one I have here is WebSocket endpoint ID. I actually meant for it to be the WebSocket session ID, not the endpoint ID. So we are going to change that so that is correct. And then I'm going to copy this too apply that so one thing i like to do in my uh my data flows that i use for work is add labels to the side of my queries so i can see them on the outside quickly to know what they're doing on the inside i find it very helpful to annotate all this information myself so when it comes to like a query record or a xqsql uh on my data flows i always have a label next to it that i paste the content of what the query is and what it's doing and even if it was like a query record here and I had a second query in here that was doing something, I'd just add that to the side as well or part of the same one. Uh, I find it much easier when I'm dealing with very large data flows to be able to have these annotations next door to the processor and know what it's doing uh, besides just, a, uh, just besides relabeling them to provide better context to it. Just be able to see the actual query so I know what, they're, what the actual verbiage is on the inside of that processor. Saves time from a big data flow for having to go click inside every single one of them and go expand and look at the actual query itself when I have a copy of it here. All right, so have that there. Now, because we changed that, we know we need to update this one up here as well to include not the endpoint, but the session. And I think that should, whoops, I just canceled it. All right, so that should solve for that. We want to make sure this is still working. So in order to do that, I am going to go ahead and test one record here. So we'll start our listen, and we'll start all the other ones as well. I don't think we should have a problem here. I think I cut all the errors out. And then I'm going to jump over to VS Code. And we're going to process one. So we see it started. It's established a connection because it's working. It hasn't closed the connection yet because it hasn't gotten a response back. Now we can jump back over to NiFi again, refresh it. We see one flow went, or one record went all the way through. We can take a peek at DB just to make sure we got the intended result here this time. So we're looking at the WebSocket connect log. And there we go. Now we have the session ID in here. So this is exactly what I was intending to get last time that I failed to catch. And this time we've made the error, or we've corrected the error. Okay, so this is working. Now we can go ahead and go back to NiFi. All right, so the next thing we want to do is handle for the, well, you know what? Let's handle for the, uh, how to close this connection. So, What's happened now is Pyth uh, over in VS Code, our Python script is still connected and it's waiting to terminate the session. So let's go ahead and take care of that so it just automatically happens and I don't have to force uh, terminate every time I go to restart one. So we'll move this over a little bit and we're gonna get a put WebSocket. There it is. Grab that, we'll connect it up. With a relationship, we'll use the connected and just clean it up a little bit here. There we go. So we're gonna use the put WebSocket here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this and what makes it work. Now, when we open it up, 
and look at the properties for it, we can see it's already configured with a session ID value, controller value, endpoint, and message is set to text in this case. So what's happening here is it's automatically, uh, because the listen already creates the attributes, it's taking the same attributes it needs in order to return back to the source and close that connection or provide that response it's looking for in order to close the connection. So these are already pre-populated with the information we need. So we just have to hit apply. We do want to go back to settings though and terminate these because I don't need them for what I'm doing here. All right, now we can go ahead and start this one up. And what we should get here is, let me go ahead and put this over here. So we just have the one out so far. We're gonna jump back over to pipe, or VS Code to our script. And then we're gonna force terminate this one. And now we're gonna go ahead and set a new one. And in this case, we do have a difference. So we see it did run and it automatically went back to the command prompt. So it finished and closed the connection. Or it got a response back that it was looking for and closed the connection. Let's go ahead and jump back over to NiPy. And what we see here after we refresh is we did have one go in here. So it did exactly what it was supposed to do, which is put a flow file back through the server for the WebSocket server and NiPy, and that allowed it to establish a connection back using the session ID to reply back. And then we have our second one that went through, and we can confirm this again by looking at dbeaver, refreshing the table, and we do see the second one went through. So now we've closed everything. Now we have a little closed loop here, which is uh, we're listening, we get content, uh, well, in this case, we get the connect event, and we're sending back to the source, in this case, our Python script, a reply back so that it can terminate that connection. So there we go. We're done with that part. And that's how we're using that put WebSocket. <clears throat> now, the next part we want to do is go ahead and handle for the content of the text inside of that uh, listen WebSocket. So first thing we want is we know we're going to get it, and when we use the text process or when we use the text relationship, I know that it's going to output a text message, and that text message that comes through will be a part of the content of the data flow. So really, all I want to do is I've already set up a table, and in that table, I'm taking two values into it that I want to place. One of them being the session ID, and the other one being the message itself. So what that text is. Now, in order to do that, I know that when I get that, I want to send it into a query record because we have two things going on here. We're going to have the content of the flow file. And then, oops, not that one. We're going to have the content of the flow file. And then we're going to have, I just copy and paste it on actually. We have the content of the flow file. And then we're going to have the attribute, which we know the session ID is inside that attribute, like it is down here. So what we need to do is get them both inside the content of the flow file so that we can feed this into a convert to SQL. And then connect it up to our put SQL so that it gets placed inside the table that we wanted to go to. All right, so first things first, we create a relationship here for text message. And then we want to go ahead and create a relationship here for the query. And now let's go ahead and create a query. <clears throat> now, I know I'm going to keep session ID. I don't need the rest of this. And then I know that the content of the message is already called uh, MSG. So that's what I'm sending it over from Python as. So there's my message, which is the text of the content of the flow file. And then that's coming into this processor for the query. And then we need to fix this because this isn't going to work right now as it is. Uh, there is no inside the content of the flow file. We don't have a WebSocket uh, session ID field in there. So we need to make a change to this because we're going to actually get going to get this from the attribute right okay so to call on the attribute or to retrieve the attribute 
We do it this way. All right, so I get so the attribute. Now I know because of the format of the, it's a UUID style uh, value that I'm gonna have some problems with this. It's not gonna like parsing it. So it's gonna give me error. So what I wanna do is convert this over to, uh, or cast it as a bar char. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so in order to do that in here, we need to put single bracket around, or single quote around this. Uh, so it treats it as a string. And then we want to do a cast with the attribute as a var char. Oops. I got that wrong again. And I know the column length is 256. UUIDs can get long. So let's just make sure we have plenty of room here. It's not going to hurt us in this case. And I think we're good. So cast the session ID attribute as a var char. Rename it as well to the WebSocket session ID, which we have in the table, and place it into message, or uh, not place it in message, but also take the message uh, field from the content ID, or the content itself from the flow file that's come through, and take that. Oh, forgot, copy this, so I can see what it looks like by annotating on the outside. There we go, got my annotation. I like to be able to see things like this just by looking off the side of it. All right, so that should work. <laughs> if I didn't get anything wrong here, we'll go ahead and start that one. And let's just, I'm gonna pop over to uh, VS Code real quick. We are gonna run it one time here. Go back and let's see if our processor worked. All right, so the flow file made it through. Let's see if the result is what we intended by looking at the content format it and we see we have a WebSocket session ID perfect and we have a message which is the message from the uh, the text that was sent over from Python now the reason why we're bringing the session ID over is because we're splitting the events into their own little log table and we're splitting the messages in, into their own one but I might want to be able to mesh them up so I know if I want to know when this came in or where it came in from or whatever with those other attributes, I now have the session ID that I can use as my key to join onto the two tables in order to fill in those gaps. So that's just in case I need it, and that's why I'm adding it. All right, close this up. Let's jump up over to DB real quick and look at the table we created for storing these. DB, there we go. <clears throat> so here's the create table I'm using. Uh, we're creating a table called uh, for a WebSocket log dot message log, and in here we have an ID that's auto increment. We have the web session ID, which is a var char two fifty six, the message as well, and then the insert, which is I actually have set up the defaults right now, and obviously the primary key for ID. We can take a look at that now. We have no content in it, but inside our connect we do have some of those couple of tests we just finished doing. So let's go ahead and send one over here and see if everything's working as intended. Okay, so welcome back. And now we have our query record. From the query record, we want to jump on over to the convert JSON to SQL. So we need to populate that now so we can get this all finished up. Inside of here, the catalog name is the same. The endpoint table is different now, so we're going to message log. So same server, insert, message log, WebSocket ID, everything else is good. We can apply that. Now we need to take the SQL relationship, connect that on over. And there we are. <clears throat> All right, so we can utilize the same put SQL because they're all going the same place. We don't need to make another one. And now we can go ahead and empty everything. Everything's good to go now. Turn this one on. Should be configured correctly. There we are. So zoom out a little bit. I know it's harder to see. But now we're going to go ahead and test this flow and make sure everything is working and then check the results in the tables and see if we got what we wanted. So back over to Visual Studio or yeah, VS Code. We'll run it. 
It ran, it completed, and it stopped, and it closed its connection, so we're good there. Uh, now we can go back over to NiFi, see we had no error, okay, no errors, so we're good here too. And now we can go ahead and jump on over to dBeaver. And let's see if the results are what we're looking for here. So <clears throat> inside of the connect string, we have our fourth one here, or our connect log. We have our fourth one in here with a timestamp, and we see it has its session ID too. Session ID ending in that uh, 368 echo. Now let's go ahead and check our message. And here we go. We got our first message, and the session ID is 368 echo, so we know it belongs to that other one, so we have the event data from it. We have the message itself as well. And then we have our timestamp and our internal ID for the table. So there we go. Let's go ahead and jump back over to NiFi. And that is our WebSocket data flow. That is all we're going to be doing for this video. Basically, we've we've uh, just recap. We set up the, if we go to uh, the configuration on the canvas, we can see we have our uh, Jetty WebSocket server that we created last time in here. And this is the one that's actually the server and taking care of some stuff. And then the lesson is our endpoint for forward slash chat. This one listens, we're taking the connect uh, relationship here, passing it through so we can log it into our table. And then we're taking the connect as well, sending it to a put WebSocket. This is what sends a response back, which is actually helping the script by closing the script. Now in the script, we could just set it up so that it closes the connection once it runs and it sends the data. But in this case, it gets a response back so it knows from the server that, hey, I sent you something, you sent me something back, so I know you got it. Or you're sending me a message back and you're telling me whether or not it was good or bad. And then and we're also sending the text message uh, relationship over here to a query record, which we're uh, adding the WebSocket session ID attribute to the content of the query. And then we're querying the message as it comes in from the, from the original flow file as it flows in here. We're combining those together, creating new content, uh, the flow file. And then we're going to go ahead and put that into SQL and set it into a table, which then gets logged into its own table. And that is our entire WebSocket data flow. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, able to get something out of it or find some new use cases that you might be able to use it for. Hopefully it's helpful there. I know it was helpful when I uh, figured out how to set it all up my first time as well. And you have a good time. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Talk to you later.